Hello everyone, so today I would like to talk to you about our latest publication which we have just syndicated as a newsletter, our first newsletter of 2021, it was about time and it's about how to best monetize your copyright in the book publishing industry. So we're all familiar with uh, reading books, obviously, and we're all familiar also with a sort of cliche that goes with being an, a, a, an offer whereby you get some big chunks of money at the beginning of a project, of a, of a, of a book pro project from your publisher, uh, which provides you an, an advance on the royalties you're going to get. And then you live a high life for, you know, one year while you are writing the book, uh, let's say two years, if you have really a big chunky advance. And then the book gets released, etc., etc., and um, you are um, basically penniless because your advance has been eaten up by your, you know, expenses, etc., and uh, it's difficult for you to actually make a good living as a professional author. So this is a bit of a cliché, and I actually discussed that cliché with uh, Joe Dimona, whose dad um, used to be a professional author. We did quite a lot of books about true crime uh, in taking place in particular in um, Los Angeles. So Joe Dimona is the ex-BMI uh, in-house lawyer, whom I interviewed as part of our uh, latest podcast, Lawfully Creative, where we interview someone who is, uh, who is uh, a member of a creative industries. And so I decided to further investigate, you know, why is it that professional offers sometimes have got such a difficult uh, trade-off whereby they work, they bottom off to write a book, but they just only have money, you know, for one or two years when they have the advance and then it's difficult and they need to launch themselves into, embark themselves into a new uh, 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 book project, writing a new book in order to make a living. So further to my research, which I have now um, materialized through a, an article, which is available on crefovi.com and our uh, French uh, language website crefovi.fr, I have come to the conclusion that what happens is that as a um, an author and as a book publisher, you do need to understand how your uh, copyright is going to be monetized. So we advise our clients in France as well as in the United Kingdom because we are French avocats with a Paris bar and also uh, English solicitors. So we are focusing our this talk, this uh, this little um, little a podcast on French and uh, UK law. And it's interesting to see that actually in both French and UK law, literary works are actually defined, obviously, in, um, in, um, the, um, in the French Intellectual Property Code and in the UK um, Copyright Design and Patent Act 1998. And basically, a literary work is a uh, work written, spoken, uh, which is from the mind and which can take the um, materialized form as a um, as a fiction, as a non-fiction, as a novel, as an essay, as a, um, a set of poems, as a textbook, as a school book, etc., etc. The list goes on. Um, so the first owner of a copyright is the author, obviously, and um, thanks to being the first, the first owner of a copyright, the author has a monopoly on many copyright rights, uh, such as on his or her literary work, such as copying the work, this is the reproduction right, uh, issuing copies of the work, into the public, which is known as the distribution right, and some other rights such as lending and renting the work to the public, uh, which are the rental and lending rights, uh, performing, showing or playing the work in public, which are the public performance rights, and communicating the work to the public, which is a communication right, and make an adaptation of a work or do any of the above acts in relation to an adaptation. So that also includes translation rights when you translate the uh, literary work in another language. Collectively, those are referred as the primary copyright rights. 
And there are also some secondary uh, uh, copyright rights, which are uh, ha have uh, uh, basically uh, derived from the commercial use of this lit literary work, which are the importing copies, possessing copies of a book, selling, exhibiting and distributing copies of a book, dealing with items that are used for the making of copies of a literary work, and also permitting premises to be used for a performance or providing apparatus for such performance of a literary work. So these are called the secondary copyright rights. And then, in addition to those primary copyright rights, as well as the secondary copyright rights, there are also some moral rights. So the moral rights are we always stay with the author, the primary owner of the, um, of the copyright. They are always with uh, such an offer. And there are formal rights, uh, which have a right to paternity, which is the right basically to um, be identified as the author of a work, and um, the right to integrity, which is the right for the author of a literary work to object to the derogatory treatment of his or her work. Um, so when the work is being deleted, altered, uh, amended, distorted, in a w mutilated even in a way which is uh, unacceptable to the um, to the offer, uh, because it uh, basically uh, breaches the integrity of the of the uh, of a work. Then there's a right to disclosure, which is the right for the offer to decide when his or her literary work is going to be released in the public domain and how. So that is the right to disclosure, as a, which is the third moral right, and then the right to object to uh, attribution, which is when a person um, explains that, uh, I mean, cl clarifies that the literary work has been incorrectly attributed to him or her. So those moral rights always stay with the offer and cannot be transferred. However, they can be waived by the offer. Having said that, um, how do you transfer those uh, those copyright rights, in particular the primary copyright rights, the right to distribute, the right to reproduce, and the secondary co copyright rights? Well, uh, usually the contractual uh, engagement uh, relationship which is taken between the, um, the author and the publisher, the book publisher, is either a, an assignment of the rights where there's a permanent and um, for the eternity, uh, transfer of copyright rights from the offer to the book publisher. So there will be no uh, termination date of his transfer and forever the copyright will be transferred to the book publisher. And then there is another option, contractual option, which is a license of the copyright rights and um, therefore it's a temporary transfer from the offer to the book publisher of these copyrights for a term which is defined in the license agreement. Now what is interesting is how in these terms uh, of the, uh, the provisions of a license agreement or the assignment agreements, how are these uh, uh, basically copyright rights um, going to be monetized? How are they are going to to be um, to be uh, of use, in particular, to the offer, so that he or she can make a good living? Um, how do uh, how do offers get paid, really? So there's a first process where offers can get paid, which is the work for hire process. In, in, which is quite common in um, publications such as scientific, legal, and also um, other professional uh, publications, where basically the offer uh, doesn't derive his or her income from the publication of such publication, he, 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 from such literary work, he or she derives his or her income from his professional practice, be, be it as a uh, as a teacher, as a lawyer, as a scientist, etc., etc. So usually these um, 
scientific uh, articles or lit uh, legal articles or etc they are a one off job which and they are going to be published in a magazine say for example um and and therefore it's going to be deemed to be a work for hire whereby uh, there will be an assignment so a um, permanent transfer of copyright from the author to the uh, publisher and um, the offer will be paid a one-off fee uh, by the, the book publisher and then nothing at all. And so usually um, for professional writers, uh, I'd say that the, um, the, the sort of common uh, rate is around, you know, 200 to 300 euros uh, pounds sterling for an article to be paid um, as a um, sort of um, compensation for the transfer, permanent transfer of your uh, of your copyright to the book publisher. So, uh, for example, the book publisher could have a, a policy whereby for one thousand words um, you get two hundred euros. Yeah. So the, the the figures though can be higher if the, the offer is a, a very well known. Uh, Practi pr practitioner in his or her field. So the same work for hire uh, process that I've just described also is quite common in the um, for offers of non-fiction titles for school pupils or children. They are usually paid a, a fee, a, a work for hire fee for a whole job, and they even asked within that um, uh, uh, writing project to support the book publisher in finding, you know, the right illustrators to do the drawings for the, uh, of, to illustrate the, the written uh, literary work, uh, to find also the, uh, the pictures to illustrate that work, um, writing the captions, producing a glossary and an index, usually they also have to do that on top of uh, writing the, um, the, the, the non-fiction title for school uh, pupils or children. And so um, in this particular sector, a 32 pages, 6,000 words book um, for school children or, or for school uh, pupils or children could earn a fee for the offer of, you know, around 2,500 euros, for example. Um, so that's around um, 300 euros per 1,000 word. Um, usually these fees are paid once only, as I say, it's a one-off payment, this work for higher fee. And usually, as I said, they come only and if the offer has actually signed the assignment agreement, which assigns all his or, his or her copyright to the book offer. So... Another um, uh, way of paying uh, offers is royalties, paying a royalty to an offer who is well established and who is also a professional writer. And therefore, while he or she is writing the book, he, he, there are some bills to be paid and, uh, and some, some, uh, some uh, royalty um, by way of advance is going to be paid. But let's focus on royalties first. So um, this is a way for a book publisher to see that uh, he, that the book publisher really tr uh, trusts his or her offer in writing a book and even possibly several books. So it makes the offers um, identifying more closely with the progress of a book since they are being paid royalties. And also it means that uh, if you pay royalties you only as a book publisher you are paying offers only if and when the book sells you know copies of a book sells so that's best for your cash flow so um usually the royalty takes the form of a pro rata percentage based on an act on the actual sales of the books um so a novelist may receive a share of the sales price also called the uh, retail price uh, on each copy sold of a book and so usually a normal royalty rate in the book publishing industry is around 10% as a re reasonable benchmark. Um, there are, however, certain sectors for educational and scientific publications where the publisher often pays royalties uh, based on the net sum received, the net receipts. So that's after the discounts to the booksellers or retailers. Yeah. So... Um, royalty accounts are 
uh, four offers are prepared uh, at the end of a particular period, say six months, every uh, six months intervals, and then the, uh, the payments in relation to royalties are remitted to the uh, offer after that. And um, bear in mind as an offer that you want to be careful not to make some um, uh, corrections on the proofs of your book because you could get penalized for that and that could come as a deduction from your royalty statement. So for a lot of uh, book, book, book publishers providing the um, publishing agreement that off offers may have to pay for any of their own corrections in the proofs that exceed 10% of the setting cost. This is to discourage them to actually make some last changes um, which are very onerous to the uh, book publisher. Now, advances. Let's go back to the concept of advances. So as I said, an offer who is a professional offer has to pay the bills um, while he or she writes the, the book, the new project, the new book. So by paying an advance on this royalty we just explained, um, such offers uh, can ha you know, write for a living. Um, so an advance is, is a basically an upfront payment that has to be earned out, i.e. paid back, before the further payments are made. And um, the way to pay them back is actually to use the royalties, which are later on going to be accrued when the book is, and the copies of the book are being sold by the publisher once it's been uh, released and printed. So um, in the book publishing industry, it's considered wise to pay uh, as an advance only an amount which is less than half of that which would be paid in royalties when the first printing has been sold. Okay, so the advance rarely exceeds half of the amount that would have been earned in royalties from a complete sellout of a first print of a book, of a copy of a book. Um, Sometimes large advances paid to celebrities, uh, celebrity offers, can only be recouped if some substantial additional income is derived from the sales of film and TV options or serialization rights. So what are these additional sources of income? By the way, let's talk about that. Well, publishing contracts um, should specify whether there are any additional or uh, subsidiary income that the offer is going to receive. So remember what I said about the secondary copyright rights? Well, there you go. So these are the secondary and subsidiary income sources we're talking about here. So uh, that could, could come from the adaptation, as I mentioned. So the translation rights are part of this adaptation rights. Um, as, as some new, new editions of a book are being sold to publishers in other countries. Um, some uh, other uh, um, additional income from the secondary rights could come from the serialization rights, sales to some newspapers and magazines, or options on film, TV, and broadcasting rights. I'm sure you've seen a lot of books uh, which have been turned into TV series or, um, uh, you know, um, one-off uh, films, wherever you go, and they are being optioned. Uh, and... Um, by the offer and his or her publisher or, or and or his or her agent and option to a, a, a film production company and that's how some secondary income is derived through this uh, film tv and um and broadcasting rights and also you could even have some substantial sums uh, derived from merchandising rights in case as an offer you've written a children's book and the characters of your children's book are becoming very famous well uh there could be some um uh, sales of uh, of goods showing the famous characters of his uh, of, and personalities. So how you, that's how you derive some royalties from that. And um, usually those uh, secondary income are being split between the publisher and the um, and the offer. Um, the split is set out in the uh, publishing agreement, of course. It could be 50 p 50, 50 uh, the offer, 50 the, um, the publisher, but it depends. It's down to the negotiation of the parties. And the money received as a subsidiary right e income is remitted on the next accounting period in the, um, in the income statement I mentioned before. And... Um, yeah, and the, this income may be also be set against any remaining advance or any expenses the offer may have incurred. So, 
monetizing your copyright in the digital environment is nowadays an essential. Okay, a lot of the books are being re read as ebooks, even listened to as audiobooks. Um, so, also some extracts of the books could be printed in in uh, the uh, in magazines and and press online. So, monetizing copyright in the digital environment is essential. And um, this is usually dealt with. Uh, in uh, addition to the um, the publishing agreement, which is called the head, H E A D head agreement, and um, yeah, so so the um, the offer his or her agent, if he has one, and, and um, uh, his or her publisher could decide to actually derive some secondary income from digital sources, such as, for example. Um, serializing the book in a newspaper or magazine, which is digitized in the whole or in part, or, um, you know, the rights from reprographic reproduction uh, on, on, on the digital in, on internet, and also the electronic version publishing uh, rights uh, of print books, ebooks, and also the audio and video rights for um, audio uh, uh, audio adaptation of the books. You know, even Spotify, I read recently, is launching into this uh, new market. I mean, this uh, rather new market of audiobooks. So you can now find some audiobooks on Spotify of your favorite novels. And um, yeah, so um, again, in uh, 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 either the head agreement or an additional agreement the publisher and the author could decide, you know, the split of the rights. So if it's um, a 50-50 um, split between the, um, uh, the publisher and the author in terms of how to, uh, to uh, uh, divide the income coming from these uh, digitalization rights, then it's called a half profits clause. And you could have a half profits clause either in, a, in an assignment agreement or also in a license agreement. Um, if your sorry, let me repeat this. But if your uh, head agreement, if your publishing agreement is either an assignment or a license, then in both instances you could have a um, half profits clause relating to these uh, uh, subsidiary income coming from your digitalization rights. Your so um, and then another source of income which I discovered while writing this um, this article about how to best monetize your. Uh, copyright in the book publishing industry is uh, actually the income which is collected by some um, uh, collecting uh, collective management societies, which in the book publishing sector are called RRO, so Reproduction Right Organizations, RRO. It's difficult to say. And um, there are only 50 RROs, uh, sorry, there are only RROs in 50 countries in the world. And as, as I'm sure you know, there are around 180 countries in the world. So they are not very uh, numerous. Of course, uh, thank God, there are some RROs in the UK and in France. And so what they do, these RROs, is that they collect the royalties from a license which they grant to um, magazines, um, uh, companies, uh, libraries, bookshops, etc., uh, websites which um, uh, need to uh, uh, do a reproduction, a reprography, a photocopy of the uh, of of uh, of a book of the uh, of of a printed work. And um, be it a, um, a hard copy or be it a, uh, a, a digital uh, reproduction, a digital reprography. And so they also, these RROs, collect some income on the uh, lending rights. So uh, a, a library, for example, is going to pay some, uh, uh, some uh, royalties to the, to the UK or French RROs because, of course, their job is to lend books. So there are also some uh, some uh, the collective management of uh, royalties relating to the lending rights, and um, yeah. So as a uh, an author and as a publisher, of course, you need to register yourself with your RROs, your reproduction rights organizations, which are functional in your which which are basically in existence and in activity in your in your uh, uh, in your country where you where you reside 
um, it actually prompted me to uh, p uh, to uh, um, swiftly register myself with the relevant IRS for offers. So as an offer, you can register yourself with the Société des Éditeurs et Auteurs de Musique, um, Société Française des Intérêts des Auteurs de l'Écrit, so SOFIA in France. As, a, as an offer, you can do that. And, um, and you can also register yourself with the uh, UK Copyright Licensing Agency, the CLA. So, uh, of course, all book publishers, professional book publishers, should definitely um, register themselves with all these IROs. And, um, and uh, then there are even some um, bilateral agreements between these different IROs in these 50 countries, which I mentioned before. So, say, for example, if you collect, if a French IRO collects some income in France on a book which has been published in the UK, uh, the French RRO will actually send this uh, collected income to the UK RRO so that the UK RRO uh, distributes it to the UK right owner, uh, right holder. So these are what those uh, bilateral agree agreements between RROs are, are, are for, and they are very useful to you know redistribute all the income um, about uh, relating to those uh, lending rights and also re relating to these um, reprography. Uh, photocopy rights. And what is interesting is that certain RROs are now also um, uh, mandated to, do, to uh, manage the uh, public performance rights. So say, for example, if you uh, read some poetry book during a performance, then these are public performance rights. And so some ROs, such as I understand in Canada, the Canada, uh, Canadian RROs are also mandated by the, uh, the um, members to also collect income on the public performance rights and also sometimes even the mechanical uh, uh, me mechanical uh, performance rights, so uh, rights derived from um, audiobooks, etc. So it's uh, interesting to watch the space and, um, and to ensure that you are on top of all uh, these different income sources as, as an offer and as a publisher to ensure that all these different income streams, um, be it the advance from your offer, be it the, sometimes the work for higher fee that you receive, be it the royalties, be it the um, income coming from those RROs, are all paid to you in due course and um, you should therefore audit your different copyright that you have as an offer and reach out to your various um, publishers and make sure that uh, you know all the accounts have been. Uh, I mean, all the money has been redistributed, um, and you can you know go back quite a few years if uh, all this is very new to you to ensure that you get all your money back. So good luck with that offers, and um, find some good p book publishers who are going to uh, to send you some um, you know some very clear um, accounting statements about the um, the uh, royalties paid and all these. Uh, other, uh, you know, um, uh, royalties on um, on uh, reprography rights and uh, lending rights, and um, keep writing, keep creating. Bye for now.